Hello and welcome to Cut Twice. Today I'm going to take you through the construction and testing of a 3D printed subwoofer. Here are the key parts of the 3D printed subwoofer. We've got the 3D printed enclosure itself. As you can see, a bit of stringing on the inside. You're going to have to sit down and remove that. Uh, it's designed to sit this way. And for that I've got some little feet and then I'll be able to put like some foam on there to reduce the amount of vibrations that pass through down to the floor. We've got a passive radiator. So these you can get quite cheap, but the problem is, is that there are no real specifications around them. So I have no idea what the FS is, and I really need to know that for modeling. So at this point, it's gonna be a bit of a gamble to see if I've got an FS that I can use, but potentially much, much cheaper than going for the kind of dedicated passive radiators. And then I've just got this pile subwoofer. It's a six inch, nothing special. I'll figure out the, oh, there's the model number. So a PLPW6D. Pile have some information. It's not the most expansive kind of specs, but there was enough for me to do a little bit of modeling in Win ISD. And this shouldn't go super low. I am hoping that with the passive radiator, we can get down to about 40 Hertz. This has an FS of about 50. So we will see what we can do, but it should be, it should be enough to cross over like a, a couple of satellites and just to give it a bit of low end. So you get that bit of music, probably not enough for home cinema, but that was not the goal of the design. Okay, so now I need to put these together and do some measuring. Initially for the passive radio, we're gonna use good old Bluetech. I'm hopefully gonna be able to use the Bluetech and then measure it with the Dayton Audio DAT and then that will give me the resonance. Hopefully or there'll be a resonance for the driver, resonance for the passive radiator. And then we can see kind of what the passive radio is actually doing and if I need to get a different one. <laughs> so I'm gonna cover the top part of this with foam like this to help provide a better seal between the sub driver and the enclosure. So I'm going to try and sort that out. Okay, so hopefully that will produce a pretty nice seal. Now the fun part, making sure that this driver actually drills in neat and clean. Instead of putting the driver facing into the enclosure, what I've done is put it on the outside and that's going to maximize my air volume in the tube because I'm already aware this is a bit on the small side for a base enclosure. Oh, there we go. Okay. One. Might need to loosen that up a bit. Get the other ones in. And then... Okay. There we go. Pushing these in almost like a braddle seems to have worked quite well. Okay. Those all seem quite solid. And hopefully that's a nice seal around there. Oh, it's called a bit, caused a bit of delamination there. Hopefully that won't cause any problems. We can potentially use a bit of heat to seal that. Very, very attracted to that magnet. So I am going to attempt to initially seal it just with blue tack, which provides a perfectly decent seal, just not very permanent. Oh yeah, one thing I've noticed about blue tack and 3D printed structures is that it really gets into any of the like layer lines or I don't know what you call them actually, like track lines. So it can be a bit of a pain to remove. So normally I wouldn't really want to put blue tack anywhere near a 3D print, but because I might need to take this apart. Pretty critical that I can do it in a reversible way. All right, see if we can get that passive radio on there firmly. Mm, I am concerned about air pockets at this point. I think I might find it's not as good a seal, to, a seal as I hoped. I remember someone telling me a good test to see whether you've got an air seal when you've got multiple drivers or a passive radiator. And that is that you want to push one of the drivers and see if the other one moves. So let's see if we can Yes! So, I'm pushing the lower one, and you can just about see that the passive radiator is moving. So that means we've got the air seal, which is fantastic news. Next thing is I need to put some feet on it. And actually, before I put the feet on, I should probably see if it actually balances, because there's a lot of weight on the driver end. But yeah, just about balances. Perfect. And let's put some feet on. And so when I designed this, I measured these little stands to be the same width as this strip and that's made it easy because I don't have to do any finishing on the side. I can just clean up each end. Very good if, like me, you're not a natural at the finishing. Now that sits quite nicely. So I have the dats here, which is now upside down. Let me turn that over. It's got the dats. Uh, I'm going to plug that in, do the calibration, and then I can run my first test. So here we have the dats results for the subwoofer. I can see a peak here at about 25, and I think that is due to the passive radiator. 
and then we have another peak here at 100 now i think that is from the pile subwoofer driver but it's been raised from its normal 50 because the enclosure is too small um, but it gives us a good sense of what the resonances of the systems are and it also suggests that the passive radiator has a resonance of about 25 which is perfect for a project like this now i'm just going to see if i can get a sense of the frequency response obviously this is in room so it won't be perfect i've set up my you mic here now i've got roo open i'm going to get some measurements So you have a peak at 110 approximately and then you can see it's pretty much just rolling off down to 30 there's a little blip so producing a decent amount of volume so let's limit the sweep to about 100. now we've got a sweep that just runs from 30 to 90 and you can see it's clearly getting more efficient as we go up the frequency range obviously towards that peak at about 110. Let's turn up the volume a bit more to see how much SBL we can get out of it. At 100 hertz we're hitting 100 decibels which is pretty decent. That's about 50 centimeters. For a small set of speakers um, that you'd sit close to that's a decent amount of volume. At 30 we're down a lot. At 30 hertz we're about 80 decibels but we can, we can flatten that out with some EQ. See if we can push up a bit more. That's 105 at 90, almost 100 at that 75 dip there, over 100 at 60, and 30 is now up to 84, not bad. Okay, we're now hitting 110 at 90, which is bloody loud. And where are we at 30? Okay, almost 90 at 30 hertz. Let's compare the SPL graph. Mmm maybe starting to see some compression for that 30 hertz let's raise it up a bit more and i think that'll give us a sense of whether we are hitting a compression limit okay for this next one i'm going to limit the sweep to probably let's say 60 hertz because i'm starting to actually hit the limit of my microphone with these ones going all the way up to 110 Oh yeah, the system did complain of clipping. Oh, and you can see some like definite compression there. So that, that, I think we've hit the limit of at least one part of the system. To be honest at the moment, I am not sure if that is the amplifier or if that is the speaker driver itself or whether it's the passive radiator. Now that we've got a sense of where our limits lie, let's try and flatten it out with EQ tilting down a little much so let's try and bring that 60 hertz component up a little bit but this next week i'm also gonna bring it back out to 90 because we shouldn't be hitting the limit of the microphone anymore pretty flat out to 60 down a bit at 75 we're down a bit at 90 so let's try and even that out after a few iterations of tweaking the filters we've got pretty flat response out from 70 all the way to 31, almost 30. So now let's try and push the volume up a little bit. And then you can see there, we're very much hitting the limit. Visually, it looks like the passive radiator is running out of travel. So maybe a passive radiator with more X max would do better. But I think as a proof of concept this is pretty solid so i think we comfortably say we can get about 88 db at 30 hertz and then above 30 hertz we're comfortably getting into the 90s in fact there's actually potential for even more but you know for a small subwoofer for a home system pretty decent okay so in conclusion i think all in all it's been quite a successful project it's quite a neat little device I like how the printing's come out. I like the shape of it. And, you know, it's very simple, but it does the job. 90 dBs, flat, 30 to 90 hertz. So, you know, solid for use as a subwoofer, particularly in 
like a small system, so you know, computer speakers or a 2.1 satellite. Also, the shape itself, the cylinder has proved very, you know, very strong, really quite solid, particularly considering it's only plastic, like really quite awesome. So if you look at the clip of the subwoofer in use, you might have noticed it like walking and moving a little bit. And part of the problem is all the weight is on this side. Like the balance point is, is about there any more than that. And, the drivers going down i think potentially you could go with one of these pile drivers on this side and one on that side as well and then you'd have like a balanced kind of compression but i think that would make the issues of the enclosure size even worse because i think i think if you've got two drivers you need twice the volume so that might not be a great fix but i'm really really curious to experiment maybe that's that's one to model on win isd and see how that affects them. But it would certainly stop the walking because then the two drivers' actions would be balanced and they'd hopefully cancel out the force of the other. I still might try it just to see how that looks in practice. A radiator with more travel would probably be a better map. You want twice the air displacement from your radiator that you get from your driver and so you could either have more X max more travel or potentially you could use two of these if you kind of change the design to allow two passive radiators an isobaric chamber where you have two drivers working together and then you need half the enclosure volume which would you know um, be quite a neat little fix for this these pile drivers aren't too expensive and particularly you're going to be getting a passive radiator anyway um, probably just pay a little bit more get the two pile drivers and then figure out a way to build an ice barrack chamber on the back. The other problem is I started to run out of filament. So I think this is 800, 900 grams of filament. So your standard one kilogram filament roll, it's starting to run out of simply material. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and entertaining. Goodbye.